Hey, good day, y'all. Sunday, July, or Saturday, July, what did I say? 27th? Yeah, well, I didn't say it yet, but I was trying to remember. Well, I got ahead to Canadian Tire. I was in the middle of weed whipping when the, you know, the trimmer head uh, quit on me. It was not the original one that was on it. It was kind of a rigged thing that we kind of made up with Oregon parts. Anyways, I'm going to go get uh, the original one for this John Surratt. It's a GTS 2228. Same thing as the Husqvarna. It's not any different. Um, not really, anyway. Uh, so, yeah. Um, I'm just going to pull over. i got two guys coming up behind me here. I don't want to have to speed or anything. It said Canadian Tire is closing at... Um, at six o'clock and it's well it's like 4 30 right now and uh, um there we go that's a lot better way up there i don't know why i was thinking put it so low okay all right let's go so yeah they close at six o'clock now so anyways i could have gone tomorrow but i need oh shit Oh, I remember what size. It's a three quarters. I need to get a boat plug as well. I ordered a bilge pump yesterday. Um, that's arriving today. Uh, True's going to install it, I think, tomorrow. I'm not sure yet on his schedule. Because um, my other bilge pump in the boat uh, seized up finally. Um, what else what else what else yeah so bilge pump is coming oh and then i ended up ordering i can't afford it really but i ended up having to order another master canopy i got a 10 by 10 this time and uh uh so it's arriving today too one day delivery for a 10 by 10 master canopy anyways the other people at master canopy got back to me but they said two to four weeks before they could get parts out to me and it was a whole big rigmarole trying to figure out the parts and i'm like it's so simple it's one part it's the side struts like how many different kind do you make they're all the same the struts no we need this and that so i got him his little letter and then i had to measure the length uh, from from the toe of the, the you know the canopy frame up to the uh, the top toes I guess is what you'd call it and uh, so they needed that and then what was the last thing they needed that I sent oh, anyways I took pictures of it all sent it to them and I'm waiting to hear back from them now if for some reason I'm not going to touch the 10 by 10 like I'm not going to take it out or do anything before I bring it to camping so if the 12 by 12 I get the parts they work before I leave August 12th then I'll send the other thing back I've got 30 days right once you purchase it so so that's the plan um, I still need to get some paint for the boat floor I haven't gotten that yet I got to see what my budget is I just got my pension so got to see what it is like you know where my expenditure is going I just had to put another $200 on my electricity bill for you people in Ontario Hydro One or whatever for people else we all know it's Hydro One in Ontario it's see every like Americans you call it electricity which that's actually what it is but here we call it hydro oh turn the hydro on turn the hydro off it's because most of our power comes from hydroelectric dams or whatever have you now here in Ontario there's a hydroelectric dam not far from where I live here about 30 35 minutes in Elmont although the power from that doesn't come out here um, it, I think it's mostly in that area for Elmont um, and then, of course, we have nuclear, the can-do reactors, which are getting long in tooth, but um, they're still really good reactors. There's one in the Bruce Peninsula where I go, you know, Bruce Power Plant. There's one at Darlington near the campground down in Toronto. Um, I don't know where this is. I think that's only two of them. Maybe Chalk River? Chalk River is, is Atomic Energy Canada, or at least it used to be, and that's where they you know do science work and you know try to push the industry further with technology and whatever so it's pretty smart cookies up there let me tell you um, hot again today but not so humid so I was weed whipping the um, or trimming whatever um, where my got my girls you know my plants and starting to clean all that up I got I picked up um, 
I'm, I'm going to start using a, a company's uh, fertilizer. It's all based on organic or natural stuff. Um, I'm not sure if that's 100% organic. I, I'm not going for the organic thing. I don't care. You're not these guys that tell you you're smoking bad stuff. Well, then you're not properly plushing it the last two weeks in your, uh, you know, before you pull them because uh, once they're plush, there's nothing in them to worry about. So. <laughs> It's like these guys that put molasses in and think they're gonna have sweeter or change the taste of their weed. It's like, no man, it's feeding the bacteria. That's what it's for. The, back, the good bacteria that the plant uses, the roots, all that stuff, right? So, anywho, with all that. So I was weed whipping back there and then, oh, I caught the line on something. Um, oh, <laughs> I didn't even know it was there, but one of those tomato metal things. Anyways, uh, I had put a couple back there just to try them with the plants. Didn't really like it. So, um, actually, I still got a whole bunch because now the plants are still young. I should try and see, uh, do it that way. Because it holds the plants more steady and it holds the leaves. Oh, maybe I'll try it. Anyways, um, so I'm going to go get this done. I want to get this stuff done. I'm doing it. You know, the heat is, it's hot. It's 27 Celsius I'm showing here, but uh, it's not that humid, so I'm okay. I don't feel any out of breath or any of that stuff, so. Um, so, yeah. Um, so right now we're going to get a boat plug and a weed trimmer head. I brought the, uh, the weed trimmer with me because I want to make sure before I leave today entire it actually fits and works. So, um, we'll see. Uh, I can't remember how much uh, was modified on this thing. I probably could have done it tomorrow and saved some gas because I still got to go grocery shopping tomorrow. But then I got to add this to the grocery shopping and there's no doubt my mother's going to be wanting some frozen stuff. So better just to get it done now get this stuff out of the way and then tomorrow I'll stick to the groceries if she's ordering anything from Carlton place that's frozen then that comes priority so we do the usual Walmart independent and fresh go thing and head straight back to her place and then uh, Monday if we need to do anything down in this end of the at neck of the woods like at Metro or something then I'll go there as well so Anyway, so yeah, that's what we're up to. That bag uh, that with that canopy and it's pretty heavy. Some of these lads they've been sending are pretty small guys. Like, I'm sure they're strong, but they're still pretty small guys. So they're heavy. Those those master canopies. They're made out of. Is our sign gone now, or is it? Oh, you can't see. If I can get the weed whipper, I'll go weed whip around that sign. I just got to see if I can get the right part for it. I want to make sure it's going to fit. So I measured the bolt size. It was, oh fuck, quarter, quarter inch bolt. Like the, the, the thing it screws onto. So I think everything is, is, is it supposed to be. I looked at the diagram and it looks correct to me. It's the same as, like I said, it's the same as the Husqvarna's. Um, they just, you know, Husqvarna bought John Surrett so many years ago. So it's really not a John Surrett anymore. I don't even know why I stick. Like I got this thing about John Surrett chainsaws and everything John Surrett when it comes to yard stuff. Because like I, I think I've said this before, my very first chainsaw, um, I was like 16 years old and it was like a tank, but it was a John Surrett chainsaw. But the thing never quit, always started, cut it the biggest, smallest trees, whatever. It weighed 800 pounds, it felt like at that time. And then my friend, I was living, or staying with, yeah, living with my friend Kevin and his girlfriend. So we were out doing, you know, wood every winter for the wood stoves and everything for the farmhouse. And uh, so we had the John Surrett's and they just cut through the wood like butter, right? And that was all elm back then. Elm was still around. And that's all we were cutting because uh, on the property that we had, it was like 90. I still can't believe that to this day. I almost want to drive back there and see because like Dutch elm disease killed most of the, you know, the Dutch elm, tr the elm trees. But um, 
I'd be curious to see if any survived because we didn't cut them all down. We made sure to, you know, uh, kind of do like a thinning cut because, you know, we want the other, you know, the plan, Kevin's plan and Andrea was to stay there a long time. They didn't, but um, a few years, but um, long term. So, um, but yeah, that's, I mean, literally that's all we were cutting and burning was elm. There was like really nothing else there. It's weird. Um, I think there were some apple trees, which we didn't cut because they were healthy growing apples, you know. So we didn't touch those. I don't recall any maple. I, th I remember Kevin saying something like, we've got all this hard elm, and it's a really hard wood that burns. It's an oily smell. It's not the best smell. And then uh, I remember Kevin once, we ended up ordering a dump truck load of um, a mixture of ash stinks too like piss when you burn it but the nice thing about ass is you can burn it when it's green but when it's dry it's it's a faster hotter burner not a soft wood not a hard wood well it's like two-thirds hardwood let's say but it burns quicker so you mix it in with the other you know like the elm and stuff like that and then there was sugar maple in that load so we we had um oh shit i can't remember uh who brought that i remember it came in, in a drumming triaxle dump truck and it ended up being oh god nine face core maybe or nine full core was it 27 uh that doesn't sound right i think it was nine to 12 face cord so that would be well nine face cord is three full cord so it doesn't seem like that's enough for a triaxle dump truck because we got a, well, when I was with Jamie, we had a, I still say we once in a while, I was like, I'm still doing stuff with him. Um, we had a smaller truck that could carry 12 face cord. So that doesn't make sense then. It must have been 20 or 21 face cord, which was a full, which in today's terms is seven full cord, which is a tandem load. I think that's what it was. It was weird too, because they couldn't put, I remember something about it they couldn't put eight foot logs so we had to go cut everything like into four foot then the guy loaded it all into the dump truck and then it came out to Winchester we were living out well closer to Winchester Springs is where we were uh, the airport road if anybody's lived out there um, that was a great old farmhouse um, lot, we had a lot of fun there um, parties and people and just oh, the good old days 70s early 80s um, Got free haircuts because his girlfriend Andrea was a hell of a hairstylist. She had like a chair at one of these big salons in Ottawa, so she was driving back and forth. But then she was doing private ones, so we built her like a little barber shop in the, you know, in the farmhouse in one of the rooms because it was a huge farmhouse. So, and uh, so uh, yeah, so we got free haircuts and you know all that kind of stuff. The good old days. But yeah, John Sered chainsaws. Can't say, well, at least those ones. Now they're Husqvarna's, which I'm going to say out here, I don't know, maybe it's 50-50. People use still or, or Huskies, Husqvarna's. You know, there's a few people that, you know, do crazy things like buy Poulas and stuff. I don't think very much of those. Those are like bargain basement ones. You can't, you know, when you're heating your house and it's your, like, your main source of heat, you can't buy a cheap-ass chainsaw and a cheap-ass splitter. You know, back then we didn't have a splitter, so we were chopping, chopping everything. Imagine, I mean, every day we're out there, like, early in the morning, you know, he's bucking up logs into four, like, into 16s, and then, of course, I'm there with the splitter. Had to be done in winter, so you're always a year behind, because in winter, especially with the ash, it splits a lot easier. Wood splits, that's, you know, splits easier when it's frozen. So when you see these guys taking a whack at a piece of wood in Northern Ontario on one of these YouTube sites and go, that looks awfully easy. Well, it is because the wood's frozen, but they know that, but they probably don't say it. Some of these guys with their vanity, hey, eh? yeah, I'll look pretty cool if I can split that up there. Up, ba -ding, ding, bang. And it's like, okay, but it's a lot easier when it's frozen. I mean, you could probably hit it with a, th a thumbtack and it would break. <laughs> okay, that's an exaggeration. But anyways, well, listen, I'll end this one. Uh, as always, please like, share, and subscribe. Um, we finally broke 420, so now I got to do a live show. Um, Digger, 
you know, said that's what we ought to do, so that's what we're going to do. And uh, I just don't know what day yet. I'll figure it out. Maybe this sometime this week. Um, we're definitely going to do a live stream from uh, Sabo Beach when I go. So, uh, yeah. So there we go, folks. Uh, thanks for coming, as always. And thanks for the comments. And thank you for the GoFundMe comments. I, Diana made a good point is that you're looking to get money for something like that's a vacation thing it's not a necessity so see that's how I kind of took GoFundMe I don't know if those are the rules but that like I'm like her maybe it's because we're both older or something but it's like to me GoFundMe is for stuff that people are like they're really stuck you know I'll, I'll do a separate video about that so um, other people said go for it but I don't know. Diana is a pretty smart, you know, Diana, you know, you can, I'm sure you're hearing this, but I mean, you know, I know you're super smart. So a lot of stuff you've said to me, I've taken that advice or listened to what you have to say. It's like, okay, that makes sense. So what she's saying is how I feel too. Now, maybe it's because we're both older or we're both country people in Canada. I don't know. It's just doing a GoFundMe for that RV bus. Um, I mean, the RV bus isn't like an emergency thing, right? So, okay, anyway, say the B on that. I will be back. Thanks, for, like I said, thanks for commenting. Oh, be good to your fellow human and peace, long life, live long and prosper.